This is where the earthquake was. You've got two plates coming together at a rate of about 10 centimeters a year. And from year to year, that doesn't cause any serious perturbation. But what happens in some of these subduction zones is that this surface between the two plates locks up. And as that locks up, the compression that happens between the two plates builds up with time. And with time, what you get is a deformation, a bending of the upper plate, the Japan plate. And it builds up until some critical threshold is reached and everything breaks. All of the strain is released, the earthquake continues, and you get a flexing of the upper plate. That causes, uh, if you will, something like a reverse cannonball on the seafloor. The, the seafloor comes up and pushes the water, and that water um, moves away and, and becomes what's known as a tsunami. Um, here we're showing the position of the earthquake. It's at a very standard depth for these kinds of earthquakes. It's about um, 15 miles below the surface, so it's very close to, to the region where people live in Japan. Um, all around the world, we see earthquakes in these kinds of environments. It's so common that we call it the seismogenic zone, and one of the things that the National Science Foundation has been doing that UTD researchers have been involved with is studying um, what goes on at the seismogenic zone to make such large and dangerous earthquakes. What happens is the plates, uh, the Pacific plate is, is uh, converging with the Eurasian plate beneath Japan at a rate of about 10 centimeters a year or about four inches a year. And that's a very small amount. If that moved every year, there would be no problems. But in fact, what happens is this surface, this interface between the two plates locks. And that strain builds up year after year, four inches, four inches, four inches. And after maybe 90 years, Everything breaks. The, the, sea, the, the upper plate, which is the seafloor off of Japan, moves up, and that pushes the water in something like a, a, a reverse cannonball, if you will. The, somebody jumping into the pool from underneath pushes the water and, and makes these uh, tsunami waves that become so dangerous when they actually reach the shore. An earthquake that's this shallow will almost certainly have a surface displacement. There'll be a fault on the seafloor. Many earthquakes in subduction zones happen much deeper. They go down to maybe three or 400 miles deep. And those, even though they're great earthquakes, they don't have a surf, uh, any expression at the surface. They don't generate tsunamis. But these shallow earthquakes, because they do have uh, an expression on the seafloor, do make these very dangerous uh, tsunamis. Yes. You know, you always see on a map, it'll, it'll show you a little dot. But in fact, when you get an earthquake of this magnitude, you can't talk about the earthquake happened here because the rupture, you know, it, the, the actual rupture is going to be hundreds of miles and in, in a, long, a long strike, you know, along the horizontal, and it's going to be, you know, tens of miles vertically.